Peggy Noonan was a special assistant and speechwriter for President Reagan. She is now a CBS News contributor and Wall Street Journal columnist. Also with us, 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl, who covered the Reagan White House. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Peggy, how much influence did she have? Oh, she had plenty of influence. This was the uh, Ronald and Nancy Reagan were not only a great love affair and a great marriage, they were a great partnership. She looked out for him. She made sure he had time to think, time to do what he had to do, made sure people didn't take advantage of him. She also was someone who bluntly told her husband her views. She didn't try to be you know, ragging away at him, but boy, yeah. on big things, she told him what she thought. <laughs> but she and did at the rag end, away at him. You know that. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean in a nattering, irritating way. She knew not to do that, but when she had a bee in her bonnet, did she stay on the subject? Why, yes, she did. You know, Leslie, she wrote in her biography, My Turn, for eight years I was sleeping with yes. the president, and if that doesn't give you special access, I don't know <laughs> what does. That's exactly that yeah. That's a, It's such a great line, but Talk about the access and how she used it, because she, in the second term, had a great deal of influence on foreign policy. You know something? First ladies generally are not appreciated and celebrated for their, inf I don't mean influence, I mean their ability to help hold the country together. Presidents don't ever trust anybody except their wives. They are the people they go home to and bat things around. Honestly, she was very powerful. Mm -hmm. And not just in who she helped him select mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of the staff, but in terms of policy. But he clearly relied on her, too. That, that clip was very telling when she says, we're doing the best we can, and then he repeats, we're doing it. He really relied on her in addition well, to more, her. Well, more as, as the presidency went on and he began to falter a little bit. Mm -hmm. But she I think pushed part on of it issues. was that he could not hear. And mm -hmm. there were times when she literally was the interpreter of the world in his ear. I'm mm -hmm. struck by how she wanted to make sure that the right people were next to him. Absolutely. She, she was the consigliere exactly. in a way. You know. if, if she didn't think someone around him uh, was ha protecting his image, protecting, yeah. protecting him as well, then she found a way to a chief of get them would, off the scene. And if she thought a chief of staff who no longer was useful? Ra oh Don Regan. Gosh. Gone. <laughs> Gone. He made a mistake. Uh, I think he hung up a phone on her <laughs> and that, when she was talking to him, and that was sort of... That was the end of that. That was the end. <laughs> Goodbye. But she also felt that he wasn't... Um, she, that, that he wasn't propping Ronald Reagan up in, in the way she thought he should have been. He was trying to take too much power for himself. Oh, he, and letting it yeah. Be known. There were some ego clashes, I think it can be said. A lot but, of it had to do with Iran-Contra, too. Mm -hmm. How influential was Nancy Reagan in terms of encouraging the president to go out and apologize? She did. Um, Lou Cannon writes an article this morning the in the great New Luke York Cannon. Times. Yeah. The great Lou Cannon, the mm -hmm. great biographer of Ronald Reagan next to Peggy Noonan, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said that Nancy pushed Ronald Reagan to go publicly and, and apologize. And once he finally listened to her, which mm -hmm. he, was, he was not eager to his, do in the beginning, his numbers, his, went his up. numbers yeah. bounced right back. She had a better sense of, uh, I hate to say public relations, but public relations. She had a better sense of, look, this isn't working, we've got to do this, than I think he did. And she covered that flank for him. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, both, you both really knew her. Peggy, if you'll start us with this, can you tell us something about her that we didn't know that you, that you feel comfortable sharing? Yeah, I, I saw a great deal of her in the, in the past 10 years. I got in the habit of, she was a very active member of the Reagan Foundation uh, and Reagan Library boards. So when we would go out there for a board meeting, I would see her and I got used to going to her house and talking with her, and this was, she was so much fun. She was witty and amusing, rather sly in her observations. She was like a girl girl. She loved gossip. I would Nancy save Reagan go gossiped? She loved, well, it we was all never love gossip, Peggy. It was never unkind. It yeah. was never judgmental. She it was part of the history of humans. <laughs> you know she loved gossip. Uh -huh. She loved knowing who's seeing who, who looks great. Oh my God, what did he do? So I would save up stories for her and bring to them. Share. Yeah, and half the time she'd say that's fabulous, and the other half she'd go, I know that. And you but saw a funny side to her. I Leslie. did. You know, I only saw the image mm -hmm. when I started covering the White House. He, they went on their first European trip. Peggy was a very influential speechwriter at that time, writing mm -hmm. for him. And it was a triumph. It was a triumph. 
on the, on the flight home, I was in the pool, and we were invited back for an off-the-record sip of champagne, and I saw a raucous side of Nancy Reagan I never dreamed was in there. Mm -hmm. Funny, hilarious, uh, no holds barred. Uh, she was the one making the toast. I then went to try and interview her. I said to her press secretary, we have to show the public mm -hmm. this loose, fun Nancy Reagan. And they agreed, gave me an interview, and the minute the camera went on, up went the mask. <laughs> uh, All right, we thank you so much. The public never saw it. Yeah. Great to see you. Great to have both of you here. Thank you.